This edition of the Ritzy Travel Guide series, we're in one of the most fascinating cities in Europe, Barcelona, Spain. One of the most dynamic, cultural and vibrant stops you can make in the Mediterranean. We're going to show you how to drink, eat and celebrate your way around the city. And see exactly why Barcelona is one of the top places in the world to visit right now. Welcome back to the Ritzy Travel Guide. My name is Bill and it's great to have you along with us. And in this edition of the Cruise Guide series, we visit a city that's right at the top of most people's travel bucket list, Barcelona. Because it's in the world's top five cruise ports right now in terms of ships that stop there or use it as their home base. In the past couple of months, we've been in Barcelona twice, first in the summer and this time in the autumn, and we're gonna show you exactly what there is on offer. In our cruise guide series, we rate each city or town on a number of factors. What sites there are and how interesting they are, the food and drinks, the ease of access from the port. Are there any other day trips you should go on? And right at the end of the video, we'll summarize and say, has it been a hit or a miss? So I've generated this extremely handy aerial map for you. So the port is southwest of the city and you've got to get yourself into town over there too far to walk, so you could either take a cruise provided shuttle bus if there is one, if not, use the city provided bus. There's one next to each ship, and then these buses track through the port and drop you off at the foot of downtown. There's only one stop, which is the Columbus statue, from where you can walk in. Arriving in Barcelona for a fun-filled, action-packed day, and there's MSC. Do you love or hate them? Whenever I put out a video on MSC, I either get hate mail or love letters. It's one of the most polarizing cruise lines out there. Right, so once tied up, let's get ourselves off. Past the smiling, waving Cunard staff. Good morning. And into the terminal, which is quite large. And down the stairs, and the first thing you'll come to is a large duty-free. We checked out the prices and they were really quite reasonable straight outside and to the shuttle bus area. If you don't have a cruise organized tour bus, you can take the city shuttle version into town. Couldn't be easier. Here we are, cruise bus. It is four euros 50 for a day ticket, which will get you to and from the center of town. It's a slick, well-oiled machine, as there are so many ships in town, and you will be dropped off at the Christopher Columbus column. That's him there. And from here, it's a few minutes walk to La Rambla, the main pedestrianised shopping street in central Barcelona. La Rambla is possibly the most sensible starting point for the city, as so much branches off from here. There's any number of bars, restaurants and shops, and those ever-present, slightly annoying street artists dressing up in crazy things. I thought that was a statue for a minute, but it's actually Galileo. Getting thirsty by the moment. Well, it's almost time, isn't it? Okay, sun's going down. It's tapas time. We're in Calais Bly, famous for its assortment of tapas bars. Let's go and see what we can find. Hmm? Look at that one. Oh my goodness, the choice is overwhelming. It goes on for miles and miles. Endless choices. Look at those. Come on, you know your taste buds are going. Alrighty gang, time for tapas. Getting hungry, sun's going down, everybody's out in the streets. Bit of vibe, bit of buzz. We positioned ourselves right by the bar. Best place we can see what everybody's up to. And just look at the selection that's offer. The counters are groaning, look at this. Look at that. Where does one start? Yum. You see. Sangria and tapas, where can you go wrong? We are literally parked in front of the tapas. We have ordered some octopus there with something or other. She slightly lost me with her, her Spanish. Some meatball, some cheese and beef. Now, now that was one we didn't go for, that goat cheese. Mini burger tapas. It all looks delicious. Racing structure, quite straightforward. Anything with a little red blob on the top is two euros, and anything without red blobs is two fifty. So there's nothing here. It's terribly expensive. Bargain city, right in the central bus. And we haven't even gone 
there yet. Look at that jumbo size sangria. It's a really fun spot, this downtown Barcelona in a nice buzzy, vibey tapas bar, indoor, outdoor dining. But we're in the best spot. We're right by the counter. And why should you be right by the counter? Because you can see what everybody's ordering. It gives you ideas. This was only supposed to be a little pit stop en route to somewhere else. All righty, what have we got here? That is really good. It's sausage with kind of like a crunchy onion on top. That's our second. We went to try some smoked salmon with kind of like an omelette base. This one is cod and peppers. Look at that, like a let rotisserie. Me, let me be the lazy Susan. Yes, look at that. Come on, tell me you're not going yum as you watch this. A mouthful of balls. The Spanish are really good at making super tender, super moist meatballs. Mm. Sushi on steroids. It is. Oh, yeah. This is seconds. Sausage, a bit of crunch. Dependence. Cheers, Aperol spritz and this evening's uh, pintos. We have a variety of things. This is sausage with caramelized um, onions and aioli. I'm enjoying being right at the counter here. I can see exactly what's going on. This one is a smoked chicken with serrano ham. Look at the. Right on to day two of Barcelona as we had barely scratched the surface. Incidentally, if you've only got one day, just pick and choose the best bits of what we're showing here and cram as much as you can into that. First up, let's take a look in Mercado Boquerera, the bustling market. It's buzzing, colorful, and bursting with things to look at. There will be any number of charcuterie items calling your name and tempting you to try. Oh my goodness. What a visual beast. Wow, what are those? Are they like profiteroles on sticks? It's eye candy everywhere you look. The colours of everything in here, they're just popping out of you. That's what you notice more than anything. When you're in a market, it would be an absolute sin not to try some of the food. First up, oysters. The size of those oysters. The size of those oysters. That one. one for four euros. Let's try it out. There we are. Size of that oyster. Okay, that's quite a big oyster, isn't it? Freshly chucked. I have a bit of Tabasco. Yes. With a lemon. Are you are you tempted? I have a oyster. Why are you why are you looking away? Why is it flying? That is extremely fresh. Anybody else want some? Next up, let's try some alcoholic gummies. Oh, look at the candied sugars. Gin tonic flavoured gummies. Are the gin and tonic flavoured ones? Where? Let's take a little selection. I fancy a sangria. Oh, mojito's gone in. Perfect. What a brilliant way to spend the morning at the market. What is this? This is gin and tonic. I'm having half a gin and tonic. Oh. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up as it lets us know you'd like to see more of this type of material. Next up is arguably the star attraction of Barcelona, the Sagrada Familia. But first, a safety warning. Now, one thing we do have to mention about Barcelona and La Rambla is pickpockets, because it does have a notorious reputation. We are taking precautions. Precautions such as not carrying any valuables on us, putting things carefully in concealed pockets. Invest in a backpack that the zip is on the inside, here, so it's getting harder to get access, or put it in a flap, within the flap, in a concealed compartment. Yeah, you've got three defences right. there, zip within a zip within a zip. Within a zip, 
So off to the famous site itself. Now we walk there from the old town, which is way too far. Don't do that. Take some public transport. And we've come to the Sagrada Park. Everybody is flocking in this direction. This, this is what everybody's staring and looking at. Let's take a look. This is what everybody's looking at. It's an absolute head turner. So, because the building is so close, it's very, very difficult to get it all in one because you can't go far enough back to get it in all at once. It's famous and a lot of people want to come and see it. So be patient, it's going to take your turn. If you're in the queues, you could be one or two hours. And people from all over Europe, around the world come to look at it. So, you will be sharing this view with a lot of people. Okay, we're about to go inside in just a minute, but our assigned time wasn't quite ready. So we decided to pop into a local cafe and have a cake and coffee. And we wanted to show you this, our cafe recommendation for the day, because it's one of the best patisseries we've been to for quite a while. We just had to pop into this little patisserie. Look at the artwork on those. Oh, this is ours. This is what we've ordered. Pit stop coffee and cake just off La Rambla. We were going past this oh so beautiful coffee and cake shop and thought, what better place to have a grand cram and a delightful chocolate. I have to say, that is one of the best chocolate tarts I've had for a very, very long time. Could one say lush as well? It's lush, it's lush. Right, our time was now ready to enter the Sagrada Familia. I tell you what, you will be bowled over when you see it. For those who don't know, it's the largest unfinished Catholic church in the world and designed in part by renowned Catalan architect Antony Gaudi and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Work started on it in 1882 and has been going on ever since. Gaudi devoted a large part of his life to the project. At the time of his death in 1926, less than a quarter of the project was complete and work has been going on ever since. In fact, some of the project's greatest challenges still remain, including the construction of 10 more spires, each symbolizing an important biblical figure in the New Testament. It was originally anticipated that building would be completed by 2026, which is the centenary of Gaudi's death, but this has now been delayed, and some aspects of it may only be finished by 2040. It is very unique, very unusual, and an absolute eye catcher. The inside of the Sagrada is absolutely sensational. It's a Gaudi masterpiece. If you can, really do try to visit. Just to let you know, we have many other videos covering the cities we visit. We have a playlist which they're all in, so please do take a look after this video. Hello, dog in a basket. He's going for a stroll along La Rambla, that dog. Panus one of the most well-known bakery chains in Spain, but what they have is superb. I think we need a chocolate injection. Literally thinking about it. Should we have it? Should we have it? Sorely tempted, aren't you? This is one of two triangulars. Let's have some triangular chocolate. Hmm. Oh, we might be in luck. Now these are simple, but that's Three of these chocolate pastry triangles for one euro eighty. I mean, how can you go wrong? There's another two in there. Look at that. So much chocolate, so much pastry. Chocolate is the way to a person's heart. So I had all the carbs and my wife had none. She was wanting to try out some exotic seafood from the markets. About to try something we've never tried before, some fresh urchins. Now, we're not urchin aficionados, so it's one for four euros, so we're being... Should we have two? Then you two. Um, I'm quite happy for you to try one first. Maybe you, dear viewer, have had loads of urchins and you know what they're like, but we haven't had that many, so we're giving it a whirl. Must always try. Let's give it a go. Be brave. Okay, she's taking the scissors to it. 
I really don't know how urchins are prepared. Oh, does that look nice when all that gunk came out? I'm not sure there's anything left in there. Uh, a lot of sludge and slime. Some of the estuary, some of the uh, harbour floor came out of that one. Is that the bit we eat? All the gunk got thrown away. There isn't much left, so I'm thinking... Is that all there is? Is that? There's not a lot, is there? Okay, is that yeah. four euros well spent? You see, I would rather have one of those. You see, four euros to me, that is well spent. I think that. There is very, very little left, isn't there? Let's give it a bash. Brace ourselves. Mmm. Okay, it tastes like caviar. That's what it tastes like, caviar. Is it? Spiky caviar. Would you order one again? For four euros, I get a very small teaspoon, isn't it? Glad she tried those and not me. By the way, as a heads up, our next port of call videos are going to be covering Naples and Rome in Italy. So remember to subscribe so you know when those drop on our channel. So Barcelona is dotted with works by Gaudi, and apart from Sagrada Familia, one of the other most well-known is Park Guay. And I have to say is one of the most quirky parks I've ever seen. It was opened in 1922 and was originally going to be an upscale residential neighborhood, but it wasn't commercially viable and eventually this idea was dropped and Gaudi designed a park that he felt evoked a fairy tale. It's now one of Barcelona's main tourist attractions, and in 1984, it too, like the Sagrada, was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. It costs 15 euros to get in, part of the park is free, but the main section with the best parts is chargeable. You really need to dedicate a couple of hours to walk around the park. And as you can see, it's very whimsical and like nothing I've been to before. Okay, for a bit of variety, we've decided to do the next leg of the trip around Barcelona underground. Let's test out the Metro. Right, so this is all very straightforward into English. We don't want any the two day, three day or four day passes, we can do it. We want a single ticket. So a single ticket in Barcelona is two euro forty per use. It's actually very affordable. We want two of those. So four eighty, confirm. And it's a very straightforward system. Very easy to follow. That's not too bad actually. We don't need to breathe in. I have to say, efficient, fast, not too busy, clean, and on time. So 10 out of 10 for the Metro, which took us to the old Gothic Quarter. And the best time to walk around is late afternoon and into the evening, where it's full of atmosphere and street buzz. Turn corners in Barcelona and a whole new world opens up to you. Oh, hang on, what's that I hear on the air? Suddenly feeling very expressive. You're asking for backups. Yes, backup singing. <laughs> Lovely time to be strolling around the Gothic quarter of Barcelona. Vistas at every corner. Time for dinner and a really authentic Catalan experience. So tonight in Barcelona, none of this tourist stuff. No, we've gone very Catalan, we've gone very local. We picked a restaurant which we saw earlier on and we thought that looks good. We saw it at lunchtime and we reserved ourselves a place for dinner. He's a real character, this owner. 
tell you. So there's only so much tapas and conchos you can eat. We've gone really unusual here. Well, we hope you've gone unusual. It's Catalan speciality food. In fact, to be honest, we half the menu we didn't really understand. So we point because we had that, 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 and that. And I think we're going to have really authentic Spanish cuisine tonight. I've ordered oxtail in red wine, but yeah. they ran out. Oh. So then I ordered um, like a chicken with uh, lobster stew, but they ran out. So I yeah. ended up with a Catalonian. Beans. You got big beans. But it smells good. Is it? We've decided to go very local. None of this tourist stuff for us tonight. Savory. It has anchovy in it. It has fish. It's like beans and fish. Very nice. I have to say, this is really very, very good. You see, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't think that's just a bowl of beans. That has got so much depth and flavour. I don't think I've ever been so excited by a bowl of beans. I'm absolutely bowled over because we've got the beef cheeks in there, which has obviously been really reduced and concentrated. Here we go. We have beef cheeks with Spanish potatoes. I think this is our second order because it was so good the first time. Okay, I need to give you the backstory of this one. This is actually the second dish. We ate the first one so quickly, I didn't even have a chance to film it. This is croquet potatoes with Iberia ham. And actually what, it absolutely melts in mouth. When you get these croquet potatoes in a supermarket, you think, why would we order those? Because that's the one. When they are homemade, look at this, it just absolutely melts in mouth. That is potato gold. If you think if you could ever mix gold and potatoes, that's what that is. Absolutely brilliant. When you, when you film something, obviously you can't film the taste because taste doesn't go into the camera. But I have to tell you that beef cheeks with the sauce, it's reduced, the reduction is going down and down and down, and it's absolutely fabulous. It's absolutely stunning. It is, isn't it? All right, on to dessert. We have a chocolate cannelletti, what was it called? Cannelloni. Cannelloni. Look at that. It's like Albert chocolate. Mm. I know the look on that face. Chocolate in a very light, heavenly and there is the bill. There we are. We had umpteen of those croquette potatoes. Uh, we yeah. had a beer, a wine, a Coke Zero. We had two main courses and a dessert for 47 euros. I would have happily paid much more than that. It was still fantastic. Absolute steal. Dinner debrief. I have to say that is one of the most enjoyable meals we've had for a long time for a number of reasons. Number one, it was authentic, didn't speak almost no English, so it was lots of pointing, lots of sort of uh, gesturing and everything else. The food was just honest, good, tasty. It wasn't pretentious, wasn't pricey, it just oozed flavour, great ambiance. And we weren't intending to eat that much food. We had several drinks, uh, appetizers, main courses, and a dessert on top. Came to 47 euros. I mean, even if I'd paid double that, I'd come out and say I'd had one of the best meals I've had for a very long time. Now, if you are in Barcelona for more than a day and you're looking for some tips or suggestions for out of town excursions, there are a few. First is Tibi Dabo. Take the vehicular up there and visit the church, the Sacred Heart, with spectacular views back down to the city. And if you have younger ones with you, there's also an amusement park. Secondly, a train journey up the mountains to see Montserrat. Most visitors tend to congregate around the impressive Benedictine Abbey. It's a stunning scenery position, perched right on a cliff edge. You can reach Montserrat via a special train service that leaves from Plaza España train station every hour. Thirdly, Barcelona is right in the heart of the Spanish wine-growing region. The area here is famous for its carver, the Catalan take on French champagne. Whilst you could get there by train or car, it's probably easier to take a tour. And there are a lot of companies offering those. 
One better way to spend a day or two in Barcelona than tasting some of their glorious wine. Finally, whilst not strictly out of town, you can take the cable car to the higher parts of Barcelona. It costs 12 euros and has three stops, giving you those Instagram-worthy pictures. But bear in mind, it only runs during daylight. You'll have to make your own way back if you miss it. And now one thing we absolutely have to mention is if you're in Barcelona on a Sunday, because shops-wise, it completely closes down. So you really must schedule something else to do if you're in Barcelona on a Sunday. Go look at the cultural attractions, see the museums, plan yourself a relaxing day, because shopping is almost totally closed. There is just one exception to that shopping rule, which is a mall right down the harbour, which is called the Mar Magnum. Right, now let's head back to those school boards we showed you right at the beginning and rank Barcelona on those various factors. First of all, the sights, and we have to give it 9 out of 10. There's so much to see and do in Barcelona. Next up, food in Barcelona. Let's also give that a 9. We could have given a 10, but if we give 10 across the board, you might get suspicious. So we'll give that a 9 plus-ish. Next up, ease of access. Okay, now because Barcelona is a big port, it isn't right downtown. You can't walk off the ship like you can in other ports around the world, but that's not to say it's bad. The city runs a really efficient bus shuttle service and is not expensive and gets you very close to the center of town. We're gonna give that also a nine. Day trips, there are several that you can see. Most of them are very easy to get to. If you have a head for heights, you can take that cable car or head up into the mountains. Let's give it an 8. Now just be aware that sometimes those mountains do get rainy, so watch that weather forecast. And finally, the most important score is Barcelona a hit or a miss? We'd absolutely say it's a hit. We give it 9 out of 10. Now if there's anything you think we haven't got quite right, or we missed out, or we're just wrong, please do let us know. Drop a comment in the box below. We always love to hear back from people. Several more destination guides in the pipeline. And remember to subscribe so you know when those come out. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to the channel, but just makes it easier for you to know when the next video has come. A few cruises out there, don't forget we have comprehensive coverage of all of our cruises we take throughout the year, and you can find those in our cruise list. And in a couple of months' time, we'll be embarking on a brand new cruise series with Celebrity. We'll be on board their brand new flagship, the Celebrity Ascent. Thanks so much for joining us on the Ritzy Travel Guide. We hope you enjoyed our look at Barcelona. We have several more videos coming out on destinations and cruises in coming months. Whilst waiting for those to drop, you can watch some of our existing ones here, and you can watch some of them here. And we'll see you in those.